Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you all enjoyed the uh, solution sessions you all just experienced. Hopefully you have some, some key takeaways and some things to take away with you from this summit. I'm going to introduce somebody who I have a lot of admiration for and am proud to call a friend. Nancy Brinker is the founder of Susan G. Komen for the Cure. She named it after her sister, Susan Komen, who died from breast cancer in 1980. And this is incredible. Since then, she has raised over $2 billion for breast cancer research. Her pledge to her sister was simple. I will do everything in my power to end breast cancer. She's an advocate. She advocates for the rights of women around the world and not just educating the public to the issues of breast cancer, but providing treatment for those who would otherwise not get it. She's a patriot, serving her country as ambassador to Hungary and then chief of protocol in the George W. Bush administration. We all today have a rare privilege to spend some time with someone who shows just how much impact one individual can have on an issue that affects millions around the world. Ladies and gentlemen, it is an honor to introduce Ambassador Nancy Brinker. Thank you, Matt, for that introduction. You and Nick are doing great work by convening at this summit a diverse group of thoughtful people to help advance public-private partnerships. As Matt told you, it was almost 35 years ago that my sister Susie was diagnosed with breast cancer. She was a young mother of two, beautiful, outgoing, smart, and witty. And over the two years that followed, I watched her die slowly and painfully. And toward the end, she asked me to promise her that I would do everything in my life to find a cure for this disease so other families wouldn't have to suffer. I promised her, and that promise became the foundation for Susan G. Komen for the Cure. We work in communities around the world where women need education, screening, and support. We work in research labs, raising and investing nearly $2 billion to learn that we can, to learn all that we can about breast cancer, translate it, and apply it. Every major breast cancer breakthrough and every major breast cancer scientist of the past 30 years, including three Nobel's Pri Nobel Prize winners, have been touched by a Susan G. Komen grant. And while the money we've, we've raised seems like a large amount, it's small compared to what we could do in research with more resources. And because of these efforts, we've been successful in increasing the five-year survival rate of women diagnosed with breast cancer when caught very early from 74% to 99% in the United States. People often ask me how we've been able to succeed. I believe much of it lies with our people, our workers, our volunteers all over the world, and our focus in breaking down barriers and building bridges between communities and healthcare workers, between governments and researchers. It's that same focus that makes public-private partnerships so important. Simply put, these partnerships allow everyone to focus on what they do best. As a result, things move quickly and things get done. The greatest example I want to share with you today is also one of our newest initiatives that's working. It's called Pink Ribbon, Red Ribbon. Its goal is to reduce cervical cancer mortality by 25% in certain sub-Saharan African countries while significantly increasing access to breast and cervical cancer prevention. In sub-Saharan Africa, breast and cervical cancers kill well over 100,000 women and counting every year. We launched this initiative a year ago this month in Washington with myself, Hillary Clinton, President George W. Bush, Condoleezza Rice, and Michelle Sidibe from UNAIDS. Our corporate partners also spoke at the launch, including Merck, Becton Dickinson, Bristol Myers Squibb, GlaxoSmithKline, IBM, Kyogen, and the Keras Foundation. I remember visiting a PEPFAR clinic in Tanzania four, five years ago when I was with President and Mrs. Bush. As our delegation observed the wonderful work of the clinic, I was struck by 
how simple it would be to extend the work even further to screen and to provide cancer education. A skeptic might say, well, that's just, there's just not the money or infrastructure in many of these countries to support cancer treatment. But now there is an infrastructure, and before that was built, we heard all the same skepticism 20 or 30 years ago about fighting AIDS. And yet it all has come to pass with the scale up of PEPFAR. And now these very structures can help us to screen and treat cancer in these countries that so need the help. Rarely do you find such a natural pairing of vital missions in fighting one disease from a platform built to fight another. We're not losing focus, we're saving more lives. That's the premise of Pink Ribbon, Red Ribbon. Four months after our launch, we launched the first Pink Ribbon, Red Ribbon country, Zambia. It's roughly the size of Texas, for those of you who've been there. In Zambia, cervical and breast cancer are the top two causes of cancer-related deaths among women. The average size of, of a malignant breast mass at the time of diagnosis is larger than a lemon. And Zambia, a country of six million women, has just one mammography machine. But the Zambian government <clears throat> has shown a strong commitment to improving women's health, and they're great partners. And these are low-tech, low-cost solutions to cervical cancer when caught early. We can stop it with a vinegar swab. Screening can be performed in the simplest health clinics without the need for a laboratory test, electricity, or a lot of physicians. When a healthcare provider spots a precancerous lesion, it can often be removed immediately and the entire procedure taking only a few minutes. This is the work we're doing in Zambia. Since last December, our Women's Cancer Center has screened more than 15,400 women, and nearly 3,000 of them showed positive indicators of cervical cancer. And of those roughly 3,000 women, about half were treated with cryotherapy and another half were referred for treatment, 3,000 lives saved. During the same time period, we've trained 27 health workers and we're helping to staff 17 different clinics providing screening and treatment for breast cancer and we're supporting community education projects. In July, President Bush traveled to Botswana to announce it as our second pink ribbon, red ribbon country and we have working groups engaging with the health ministries in Tanzania and Rwanda. It's remarkable progress in a short period of time, but we owe the success to our structure, which from the beginning has been a public-private partnership. First, it's been a true collaboration, with each partner recognizing that it can't deal with the magnitude on its own. There are things that governments can do, as we all know, and there are things that only organizations can do. So to begin, you have to have everyone in a public-private partnership committed to working together. Second, it's been critical that we begin this in Zambia, where we could rely on the strong support of a local and committed government. And we couldn't have achieved this without their help. I believe Sub-Saharan Africa is a region that can benefit enormously from all of these partnerships. The challenges there are immense, but the solutions are attainable. It's really just a matter of scale. Taking what we know works and applying it to new, unreached communities. And third, corporate partners must be just that, partners. Successful partnerships must have the freedom to partner with court, corporate partners without fear of reprisal, criticism. In many sections of our society, corporate partnerships face, face this kind of criticism from a small but vocal minority who prefer to denigrate them rather than help change them and their work into very worthy causes. Ultimately, such arguments do nothing to serve the poor, and our experience with our corporate partners has been just short of amazing. The projects wouldn't have happened. And when we all get to celebrate the great gains we've made, even more happens. The key to looking at the private sector is more than, is more than just as funders. These businesses have experience and expertise in many countries that can be absolutely critical in our fact-finding. And I know that with Pink Ribbon, Red Ribbon, our private sector partners have walked with us and participated actively at every step. In Africa, in Eastern Europe, in the Middle East, and even here in the United States. 
There are far too many people who lack access to basic information and treatment, and we must change our models and our paradigms. But if we can utilize these partnerships to knock down barriers between sectors, if we can bridge gaps between education screening and treatment, and if we can work together as one force united in a cause, then we can put ourselves closer to the day when we eradicate diseases like HIV and cancer, now and forever. And I believe very strongly that where a woman lives or how much money she has shouldn't determine whether she lives. We can solve these problems together. Thank you for your interest today, and thank you for all that you all are doing here. Thank you.